Okay, hello everybody. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Lars, for inviting me here. Uh, today we will, I will introduce um, low power wide area networks, which we feel will be the, the technology that will really ignite the IoT revolution. Uh, at the end, I will then add a little bit of how this will fit in Qt, because probably this is the only track that doesn't have the Cute, the word cute in its title. So it's, I'm amazed how many people are here, but so I'm happy and uh, let's see if you enjoy my, my speech. So the IoT revolution. Everybody is, uh, I see these numbers coming out in the news, billions of devices connected over the next uh, couple of years now because 2020 is coming, it's approaching very fast. And uh, so the idea that when you enter the IoT business, you say, I will become very rich very soon because this market is really huge. But time is ticking because 2020 is very near, uh, actually less, nearly less three years on counting. <laughs> And we don't really see this big trend in the connected devices ramping up. Or at least I don't see it talking with the operators that are pushing these networks. So why, why is this? We think that the main problem is the connectivity of these devices. Actually, most of the IoT devices right now, uh, IoT strictly speaking, uh, are cellular connected which is a little, it's expensive, both from a power point of view and also an economical point of view. So you cannot really scale up to the billion devices that we people are uh, talking about. So what do we really need? So the IoT devices need to be deployed everywhere. They need to deploy it very easily. You don't need, you don't want any interaction with firewalls, so no, TCP IP at the connection level, that also enhances the security because it's more difficult to hack a device with, that doesn't have TCP IP. Uh, you don't want problems with power sources. Essentially, you want devices that work on batteries. Connectivity should be cheap or possibly free. And uh, you should have a very long range and good, excellent coverage in indoor Indoor, where indoor, I mean, because most of the use cases we see today are on concerning IoT devices or for reading indoor devices and not only outdoors. Essentially, you need a deploy and forget devices. You just put, plug in the battery, turn it on and throw it in the field. And this will start transmitting data for years to come. So just for an example is uh, imagine in a smart agriculture setup that you want to um, have acquired data on the temperature, humidity of the soil, so to plan your irrigation system or the correct harvesting periods of things like that. With the current technology, you cannot deploy a lot of sensors because if you use Wi-Fi, you cannot go m very far away. You need the power supply. You cannot uh, put cables around the fields to plug in all your sensors. So, and this is just an example. So what is the answer to this, all these questions? Uh, the answer is low power wide area networks and uh, which essentially have uh, a lot of pros and some cons. Uh, they are low power, meaning that you can run the, the sensors on batteries for years. Uh, they are long range, you can reach various kilometers of distance between the radio, the, the antenna and the endpoint. They have excellent indoor coverage because their link budget is, is very high. That it comes also with the long range. And you can have both public and private coverage. Uh, we will see a little bit more uh, as we go through the presentation what we mean by that, meaning that you could use both the operator, if there is an operator providing you a network, or you can deploy a private network with your own gateways. What is the main con of this is that to achieve all these features, you have to give up the data rate, meaning that you will you have a data rate which is in the kilobits region, not in the kilobytes or megabytes or gigabytes. So essentially you can transmit very few bytes 
and there's no way to do a video conference with low power while there are networks. And other cons, I put it here both, which is public, again, public or private coverage is probably in some use cases you want the private coverage. I mean, you want to put your own gateways, but you don't, you cannot do it and you, you need only the public or vice versa. You want to extend your public coverage with your private, but that could not be possible. Again, there is a small asterisk that not all low power wider net technologies are exactly the same as we can see later on. And um, essentially they all meet these requirements, but some do better in, in some of the, of the specifications. Here are the players, the major players or LP1 uh, networks. Uh, let's start from the first one, which was Sigfox to deploy a network. Then came LoRaWAN, LoRa and LoRaWAN. LoRa is the protocol and LoRa, uh, LoRa is the, sorry, it's the modulation technology, which is closed source. And LoRaWAN is the protocol on top of LoRa, which is instead is open source. Then we have the FridgePP technology, which is the cellular technology, which is rolling out MBIoT or LTE CAT M1 networks which are more or less the same. There are some subtle differences, but essentially it's the low power wide area networks run by the cellular operators. Then there are two other players. Uh, one is Ingenu with its RPMA technology, which is another one of the last that has arrived, and Weightless P, which is again uh, a technology which leverages the LoRaWAN uh, uh, handicaps and tries to give, it's a LoRaWAN on steroids, let's say. But it arrived a little bit late. We will see this later on. So very quickly, what's currently the distribution of the IoT technologies? You still have, uh, we, we, the base of the pyramid is still made of uh, Wired connections, having a sensor connected to a wire, it's still IoT, even though it's not wireless. And there are some uh, legacy installation, especially in factories and plants where you already, they have been already wired. Then there is a lot of short range technology, which we think will move sooner or later over to the LP1 uh, part. The short range or the cloud Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee, and its siblings like FRED and Z-Wave. Then we have the low power wide area networks, which is the one we were talking about right now. Then the cellular and the satellite. There's also satellite. If you have enough money to pay the, the connection, you can deploy a sensor in the middle of the desert or the North Pole. Uh, logically, they will still, every, all this technology will still remain because you cannot have a low power weather network probably in the middle of the desert or the ocean. So you will still need the satellite for some use cases. But that, again, it's the extreme, it's the, the extreme of the, go, of the curve. Overall, the most important thing is that battery and coverage is what will make the the deal. The higher the coverage, the higher the battery life, the better, the more sensors you can deploy. And that is exactly where low power area networks will fit. Again, this is a a very quick just to indicate the sweet spot of what we feel it's the the solution to to make this IoT market explode. So here now some examples of uh, a long range connection. This is a real connection we made, I made personally. Uh, connecting a node to the Swisscom network. I was in Milano, 45 kilometers away, and the node connected to the network. This is to show that l the long range works. This, again, I want to stress this hasn't been a test that has been conducted to achieve the highest. Uh, a distance. There are tests. If you Google uh, or you go on, on YouTube, you will find people that made LoRa connection over 200 kilometers, and uh, between two mountains in Switzerland and Germany. And uh, so this is was uh, we were testing a node. We turned it on in in Milano, and it connected over to the Swisscom antenna in uh, in Switzerland. And we, we managed to replicate it. It wasn't just once. Again, it, it has a lot of uh, uh, 
uh, it, it won't connect everywhere throughout that line, but in, in many places it did. Another, uh, mm, the other major feature of these LP1 networks is the battery life. This is a commercial LoRaWAN sensor. You can see the URL there. It's from a Swedish company called Elsys. And they have on their website uh, the battery simulator. Uh, if you put in, I, I filled it in with uh, four transmission per hour up in the upper uh, box. And uh, with four transmission per hour, which is quite, I think for many use cases, it's more than enough. And with just a single AA battery, which has 2,500 milliamperes, it could last 13 years. Uh, this is achieved just to give you, uh, it's not that the battery, it's not that low power, it's uh, the LP1 technology, or LoRa1 in this case, is that it's more, it's particularly power efficient compared to other technologies. Is that the trick is that you shut down the node when you don't need to transmit. So you, stay most of the time in sleep mode. Again, the technology is very efficient when it transmits, so it doesn't need a lot of uh, power, but you need to power turn it off. So some use cases that need, uh, we will see it later on. So uh, you need to turn off your devices to achieve this battery life and turn them on very, very rarely. And when they're off, you cannot reach them with the downlinks from the cloud. So that, again, depending on the use cases, maybe you cannot achieve this battery life. Again, here it's um, the major, just to introduce so the major differences between the different, different technology of the various low power one networks. Uh, Essentially, the first major difference is between the license and unlicensed band. Uh, MBIoT and the operator is uh, um, operator is, runs on the operator frequencies. It's on the license band, meaning that the operator has paid for the frequency. Instead, most of the other technologies run on the unlicensed one, and this brings a couple of uh, uh, problems that we will show in the next slide. Uh, then there are scenarios, some technologies can be both public and private. Public and private mean that you can run your own network, buying your own gateways and setting up your own network. And this is true for LoRa, Weightless and RPMA. Sigfox instead, even though it runs on the unlicensed band, the free band, you cannot put your own uh, network. You have to stick with their, just with their network. Sigfox is more like an oper a worldwide operator which is trying to cover all the countries of the world. And then there's a final division on the frequencies band on which you will use the low power ones. Uh, RPMA is the only one that uses the 2.4 gigahertz band, which is one of the two ISM bands, or one of the, there are more than two ISM bands. And the, the peculiarity is that the 2.4 is the same all over the world. So you just need one hardware. Instead, if you go in the sub gigahertz bands, like Weightless and LoRa, depending on which region of the world, you need a different, you are using different frequencies and in theory, different hardware, even though if at the end the chip makers use the same hardware. This is interesting. Very quickly, I want to give you a difference between especially uh, the unlicensed bands. Uh, on the unlicensed, not everybody is aware that the unlicensed band is free, so you don't have to pay to use it, but there are some limitations. Essentially, there is a duty cycle. You cannot transmit every time you want. You have to transmit uh, with a 1% in one hour slot, meaning that in, uh, you can transmit only for 36 seconds in one hour. After that, you cannot anymore. Nobody is is uh, stopping for you from from doing that. It's that if some, if the regulatory offices find out that you're transmitting more, if you have one million of sensors, they will shut you down and fine you because you are transmitting too much. Uh, that is the main one of the main features. You when you start using this, for example, LoRa or Sigfox you need to comply. So your use cases must comply to this, uh, to this duty cycle. But at the end, it's just a psychological problem. Uh, most of the use cases we came across don't really ever hit this, this limit. Then the other thing is the, 
uh, that this the duty cycle problem is not is not there in the license bands. So MBIoT doesn't have this problem. You can transmit whatever you, whenever you want. Take into account that the more you transmit, the more power you use, and so the less the sensors will uh, will last. Uh, public or private network, we've seen it before, I already told you about that. Uh, some technologies enable you to build your, your own network, like LoRa or Weightless. Some others don't, especially the licensed one. You cannot build your own network because you have to buy the frequency. Uh, and also Sigfox, which is using the, the unlicensed band instead, they didn't... They, they don't give you access to the to the gateways and you cannot put down your own gateways. Uh, last one is the method of transmission and how the node goes on air. You have or ALOA or TDMA. ALOA means it's, as maybe most of you know, hello in uh, Hawaiian. <laughs> and it means that the, the node transmits whenever he wants. There is no synchronization with the with the gateway. Instead, time division uh, access to the TDMA. There is a negotiation between the node and the central station, and the central station tells the node his allocated slots in time to transmit. This uh, tr transforms in a potential problem in capacity. When you have millions of nodes transmitting all at the same time, it is probable that the network will collapse very, very easily. So let's go, let's get through the various technologies which I already more or less explained. Sigfox, which has been the first LP1 player, it is an operator approach, so you cannot do private networks. It is extremely do, low data rate, 12 bytes. You can transmit only 12 bytes in the, in the packet, and at maximum 140 packets per day. There are some questions on its security because it was one of the first players and there are blogs around that people say that they crack the security but it's not really confirmed. Uh, again, it's scalability since it's pure law. And uh, the, one of the major advantages of Sigfox instead is that it's cr cross country. Having a single operator building throughout the world means that if you have a sensor, you can move it where, uh, all over the world and it will connect where there is coverage. LoRa one, a longer slide because we work a lot with LoRa, so we know more about this. It's the let's say the hottest uh, LP1 right now. It has the widest market support, uh, more than 500 uh, LoRa Alliance members, and maybe a lot of Fortune 500 companies as well. It has been adopted by various operators and has been deployed in various countries: Switzerland, France, Belgium. Uh, South Korea uh, and other countries. So even though it's been it's operator based, you can also set up your own private network. And in some cases, like for example in Switzerland with Swisscom, you can be put your own gateway inside your building and extend the Swisscom network inside your own building. And that is very nice. And LoRa has this advantage that you can build up very, very quickly the coverage if you need it in the place that you need it by just adding gateways. And they could be also connected to the, to the main operator. It has a low data rate, again, a little bit higher than the one of uh, Sigfox, 51 to 242 bytes, depends on the connection method, but it's a little bit more technical, we won't go through that. Uh, LoRaWAN is open source, as I told you, and runs on a proprietary Semtec chip instead. It's, again, the scalability is questionable since it's pure law, but the, the modulation is different, and. Papers say it's a little bit better than Sidfox. There are three other features that uh, LoRaWAN is delivering. Geolocation without GPS. Again, your mileage may vary because it is, um, it's not very, very precise. It's not like GPS, it's in the 100 meters region, but for many use cases, it's fine. Uh, not all operators are deploying this functionality because you need the version uh, generation two of the gateways. In Netherlands, it's deployed. For example, in Switzerland, not yet. Uh, it, roaming will come in 2018. So different, you have the node that can move from a country to another, sharing the connectivity. 
and FOTA firmware over the air updates uh, is another promised upgrade for 2018. Even though, again, also here your mileage may vary since it is the bandwidth is very low, so you, it will take time to update your nodes. The 3GP MBEO CAT M1, again, it's very quickly, it's the operator standard in LP1. It's like having a low power edge connection, GPRS, LT connection, whatever you want to call it. It has a very a lower bandwidth than normal LTE. You can see the numbers there. All the major operators will roll out this technology in all the countries. And, and roaming will come out of the box since it's based on the same roaming that you have for your cellular phones. So it's based on TDMA, like cellular phones, so there's no scalability issues and firmware over the air update is available. Then the last two, which one is in, in Genu, RPMA, uh, it's not widely adopted uh, since it's, it's one of the last that has arrived, mainly in the US and Australia. And the, la and the next one is Weightless P, which is very, very promising. It's actually, as I told you, it's more a LoRa one on steroids because it adds time division, multiple access, and firmware over the air directly in the first revision of the, of the software, and it's fully open source, and it has 100% message acknowledge. Uh, if this has arrived one year ago, or two years ago, like Laura, probably this will be the winner, but it arrived a little bit too late, probably too, too late. Very, very quickly, an overview of the modules, just to see that uh, the Sigfox and LoRaWAN modules, just if you based on the estate of the chip, how big it is, are the, the, the more advanced ones, because they arrived first, but everybody will run into the MBIoT business because it, it will be the one that the operators will run. So on which horse will we bet? It depends on what you want to do. So, uh, it depends in which country you are, which uh, coverage you have. This is an example of some of the countries. But our answer is that the rest will be between LoRaWAN and MBIoT. Uh, MBIoT is backed by operators. It has a higher quality of service. And uh, as I told you, also LoRaWAN is backed by operators, but uh, the only advantage is that you can add your own gateways. It ha Laura One is the first mover, so it's building a network, but it is uh, it will be sooner or later overtaken by MBIoT. Sigfox again, it's inferior, and who is running Sigfox? It's fine, but new deployments, I think, will choose different things. The new technology, they're good, but probably arrive too late, and the pricing factor again will drive the race. It depends on what you want to. The prices will also drive the. The thing, but MBIoT looks very, very competitive. So the idea, very quickly, is that with LP1s, we finally can deliver more and more devices that will deliver more services and will start building up the whole ecosystem. And very quickly, a technology that we think will <laughs> will ignite even more once you have all these devices is the blockchain. This is a very quick introduction. Introducing the blockchain when you have all the devices on field will enable uh, nano transaction and will bring the sharing economy to a new level. An example, the hair dryer. Think of a hair dryer that will be leased instead of sold and when, when it turned on it will count how much it's on and then send the data to the cloud. This is only feasible with the new LP1s technologies. You cannot uh, do it, or, or well, you could do it also with the normal ones, but it would be too much complicated. So what are the critics that we think we have on the uh, LP1s? Most of the people will tell me, oh, you can do the same thing with the ZGB and six slow pan stuff, but uh, practically, I will uh, challenge them to do the, the same ease of deployment of LP1 devices, having the same out outdoor and uh, coverage as well as indoor. Everything works seamlessly. It's like more or less having uh, thinking of the mobile phone and the landline line phones. Uh, it works, the landline phones inside the house, but now that everybody has the cellular, nobody's adapting anymore 
the landlines. Pricing is the last thing. We will see where it goes. And again, the other drawback is that LP1s are very low, low uh, bandwidth. Conclusion, the LP1 is the technology that was missing and it will really ignite this whole IoT revolution. And probably some, we will unleash or at least some of us will be. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the time is up. So if you want, uh, if you have questions, we can talk later. Yeah, actually together. I've already myself a couple of questions. That's probably is difficult as well as I think that you, maybe you go for one question. So the first one who raises his hand, his hand. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it was smart farming is actually the best uh, scenario for LP1s because you need to deploy sensors in fields where you don't have cables or connections. And uh, you have big estates, so a long range. You don't have buildings in between, so your long range is it's really, really long range. because, And, and you, 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 you send them over into the field and you need the battery life. So for example, moisture control of the, uh, of the soil, actuating uh, irrigation uh, and turning on ir irrigators when they're out, uh, sensing the light level, the sun level and things like that. Uh, we have also seen use cases, for example, with bees. It's similar to uh, sensing how the, the weight of the hive to see how much honey has been made. And all these scenarios need these low power sensors that can be driven by batteries. That is the real key point. Okay, thank you. Maybe um, my suggestion would be you just go to our booth. Yes. So, and if you have a question, for instance, on latency, you have yes. nothing heard about latency. <laughs> Uh, or where is the connection to Qt? We have not spoken about that as <laughs> that well. That is next year we will see LP1s connected into Qt. That ah, is okay. a promise. So these questions come to our booth and then we talk about that.